If you're like me, you've wanted to incorporate lighted elements into your studio designs, and maybe you haven't wanted to go in and play around with the code too much for studio, thankfully, Ty Hill has done all the hard work for us and created these light packs for studio. So I'm gonna go through today in this video and show you how to install them for your own use. Ty Hill has created these amazing five different type of light packs you can use in studio. You can choose to either install them all or pick which ones you want to install. I haven't done any of these yet, so I figured this would be a perfect opportunity to go through and show you how to install these packs. And if there are any issues along the way, I can troubleshoot it as we go. The first thing obviously you're going to need to do is download the light pack. I will put the link in the description below so you can do that. After you have downloaded that, you will find this folder in your download folder, the modular LEM packs. So you can extract that one wherever you wish. When you open the folder, you will see the installation guide as well as the color packs and code. Before I continue, a quick reminder about the Studio Lego Designers Facebook group. This group continues to grow and there's a lot of great contributions happening from all the members. It is a fantastic positive group to join and get your questions answered or offer advice or show off your works that you've created in studio. So if you wish to join that community, go on over to Studio Lego Designers Facebook page. The link will be in the description below. As well, for those that don't know, I am a freelance commission Lego designer. So if you have a project you wish to see brought into reality in brick form, then please get in touch with me. Also, I create instructions for other designers. So if you have a design that you wish to have instructions created for it, please get in touch. Thank you so much. So first we're going to take a look at the installation guide. As you read through, you find out that these are not actually light emitting materials. In fact, what has been done is to alter the colors of the bricks themselves. So these are basically custom colors. And that would be a really interesting concept if you are more interested in creating digital art with Studio than in creating things that you can actually build in real life. So that may be something I explore in the future. He also says that all of these colors will be found in the transparent color options, with the exception of the glow in the dark pack, which will be found in the milky colors along with the standard glow in the dark color. He also says that all of these will emit their own light except for the translucent packs which will only reflect what light is available when you do your renders. All right, let's look at the installation now. So we're gonna be editing two files here. So we're going to need to find your settings.xml and the studio color definition.txt. So those files were exactly where he said they would be for Windows. I don't know if they're going to be in the same spot for Mac, but you can look around for those files. He makes two points about those files that you will have to remove them every time you're going to update your studio. If you do not do that, studio is going to overwrite those files. So make sure to do that. And the first step, we are going to back up both of those files, which is always smart to do. If you are a studio user, then you should be very familiar with this process. You should be backing up all of your files all of the time because as we know, sometimes when studio updates, it's not always going to be as stable as we would like. So make sure to back up all of your files, but we're going through this, so we'll back up these right now. We'll just rename both of those files as 
Back up. Okay, so what we're going to do now is take the studio color definition dot text and we will put that into the color packs folder and then we will edit out any color packs we don't want and then run the dot bat file so go into color packs open it up grab our color definition copy and paste that we're going to rename this now because we don't want the backup there anymore and then we have the batch file at the top. I'm going to want all of those color packs because they're all amazing. So then we can use this to install them. We double click that. It will come up with a protection error. Just click on more info and run anyway. So now what that has done is taken that information and put it in the studio color definition file. And now we can move that file back to its original spot. So now we have both the backup there and our altered file. That part was pretty easy. The next part will involve a tiny little bit more work. So we're going to take our settings file and move it into the main folder of the modular LEM packs. Again, we're going to remove the backup part of that name. Now we're going to open the color pack XML code. You can use whatever text editor you want and control A to select it all and control C to copy it and then go into the settings XML again using whatever text program you want and you are going to find this phrase here. So what we can do to make that easier is just click on the find tool and type out that phrase and there we have it so then you're going to take what is in your clipboard right now and you're going to copy that just before that statement and then you're going to save that file and just to make sure you've done that properly reopen your settings and try and find that spot again and then just scroll up to make sure that you have copied over the file correctly. I see lots of luminous things here. So I'm guessing that the file has been copied correctly. So then you're going to take that file and put it back in its original folder and then restart studio and see if we've got it to work. So let's check it out. I've just finished off this commission for a museum and I figured it would be a great opportunity to try out the lighted bricks. So I'm going to change all of these translucent pieces to luminous pieces and see how it looks. So we'll go up to our trans colors and we do not have it there. Oh, we're going to hide all available colors there we go we have so many options now so rather than just experimenting with these if we go back into the guide Ty has done a great job showing how everything will look when it's rendered out so you can pick your color from there and then go back and change what you want so I think in this one, I'm going to go with the luminous soft colors and just maybe the, oh, the amber looks good too, but maybe I'll go with just the warm white for now and see how that renders out. Okay. So I'm going to render this out and show you the results. You're going to want to make sure when you do your render that you set your light intensity to a very low setting so you can really see those lights pop against the darkness. Of course, as Ty mentioned that the translucent bricks will only reflect the amount of light that's in the render. If you turn down your light too much with those colors, you won't get them as luminescent as you would if you had full light. I have to say I am super impressed with those results. That looks absolutely amazing. I really want to thank Ty for taking the time 
to make those files and for creating such a great instruction manual to quickly and easily take you through the installation process. So I really appreciate that. I'm gonna have lots of fun playing with these things. You can see it's not very hard to do. So go and download that file, take a few minutes, get the file installed and then play around with it. I really hope this video has helped you out. If it has, please take the time to like, subscribe and share it around to others to enjoy. In the next video, I'm going to take another look at instructions and how to personalize them and customize them a little bit more so that you can create more professional looking instructions. Thanks so much for watching. Have a fantastic day. Keep dreaming in bricks. Bye bye.